I mentioned in class about shorting stock, which is essentially um, selling stock that you do not own with the intention of purchasing it later to do what's called close your position in the future. The interesting thing about shorting stock is even though you sell the stock first and you buy it back later, you don't actually receive cash from the initial sell. You only receive uh, cash once the transaction is closed, meaning that you buy ba the stock back later in the future. So if you sell it today and you don't cover your position by buying it back until six months from now, you won't ever get any cash until six months from now when you cover your position. The Another interesting thing about shorting stock is you actually have to put up cash at the beginning as if you had uh, gone long on margin. So what I want us to do is look at the Apple transaction that we've been talking about. Let, remember we had bought Apple 100 shares at $485. Well, when we did that, we took a long position in the stock, obviously expecting the price to rise. Well, let's say somebody else has a different opinion, and they decide they believe Apple that is going to drop in price. So they short Apple. So they basically now sell it at $485 a share times 100 shares. So they sell it, and they are entitled to receive $48,000 as the sell price and they plan to purchase it later hopefully after the price is dropped but they also have to the day they short it put up margin and the initial margin requirement was 60 percent so they have to actually add to their account 60 percent of 48,000 which is 29,100 I want to just uh, verify via an equation that this is actually 60% of 48,500. And this is kind of weird. We obviously know it's 60%. But I want to show you the margin percentage equation for shorting stock. It's it's essentially the same as going long, but it's, a, it's um, just a little odd, I guess. So essentially the margin equation for shorting stock well actually let me let me come over here and, and say this the the whole idea behind the margin percentage is you essentially take the amount of equity you've got divide it by the market value of your portfolio and that will give you your margin percentage so we need to calculate the amount of equity we have in our portfolio once we've shorted Am uh, Apple, and we'll pretend Apple is our only stock. So to calculate our equity, we have locked in that selling price. We know for certain we have sold Apple for 48500 We also have added to our account cash of 29100 What we don't know, though, is the purchase price. Or, or actually let me restate that um, we will subtract our current stock price which is going to flex or sorry current uh, portfolio value which is going to fluctuate as time goes by and Apple's price changes so I will receive 48,500 for selling Apple I have also added the 29,100 to my account and if I were to close my position today, this is the price I would have to pay for my Apple. And the divisor is the current portfolio value. So to figure out the margin percentage, when we just shorted Apple at 485 and the price hasn't yet changed, the 48,500 is our selling price. Our margin that we added was 29,100. And I, actually, I probably shouldn't call that margin really. It's it's the cash amount that we added when we when we sold and we had to put up margin. 
and then subtract the current portfolio value, but the por the price of Apple hasn't changed, so it's just 48400 And then the divisor is the current portfolio value of 48500 So these two will cancel, and I'm left with 29100 divided by 48500 which is 60%. Let's say the value of Apple declines to $400. I'll do that in blue. If the value of Apple drops, that is good for us because we've just shorted Apple at 485 So we've locked in our selling price of, of $48,500. And if the price drops, then I can buy it at a cheaper value, which would boost my equity. So what I want to do is calculate the margin percentage if the price drops to 400. So my selling price is still that 48,500. My margin is still that, or the cash that I added was 29,400 or 100. And then um, the current portfolio value, if Apple drops to 400 a share, would be 400 sh uh, a share times 100 shares, or 40,000. And the divisor would be that 40,000. Oops, that is not a negative 29,000. It's a positive 29,000. I <laughs> tend to make that mistake a lot. So my numerator is now 37,600, so you can see my equity has increased a lot, and the denominator has dropped to just 40,000. So my equity is now 94%. And again, we expected the equity position to rise because Apple's price declined, meaning I can cover my short position by buying back the stock at a much cheaper price. Now what if Apple's price rose to $500? Let's calculate our margin percentage. If Apple's price rose from the current price of 485, that's actually bad for us because we sold it at 485 and if we were to buy it back right now, it would cost us 500, so we'd actually lose $15 a share. Because the price is rising, that means my equity is declining. To calculate my equity, I would take the locked in selling price of 48,500, add the cash that we put in of 29,100, subtract the current value of the portfolio, which would be $500 a share times 100 shares, or 50,000, and divide by that 50,000. I know listening to me punch buttons on my calculator is riveting. I get an equity percentage of 55.2% down from the 60% when I originally uh, initiated my short position.